Hallelujah. Psalm 122 and verse 1. The Lord impressed upon my heart to challenge us across a few thoughts this morning and then we'll pray. It says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There is such a place as the house of God or the house of the Lord. And the psalmist said, I was glad. I hope you know that he had a palace. He had other places he could go and he had gone to. But he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. One of the major indicators, please lend me your attention now. One of the major indicators that you love God is your passion for his house. Hallelujah. It is impossible to claim that you love God and not have your passion reflected in his house. Your love for the house of God is proof that you love God. Psalm 26 and verse 8. Your love for the house of God. Psalm 26 and verse 8. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. I have loved the habitation of your house. As proof that I love you, I also love your house. Are we together? Psalm 84 and verse 10. Psalm 84 and verse 10. It says, For a day in thy court is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. This is a man expressing his love for God and he does not reserve that expression just to the person of God. He extends that expression to the house of God, lavishing so much love, gladness, and passion when it has to do with the house of God. David so loved the Lord in 2 Samuel 7, I believe, from verse 1 to 3. This was a king that had fought many battles, and at this time, God had given him rest roundabout. And one day, the Bible tells us that David sat in his house, and he began to contemplate after God had given him rest. Let's read 1 to 3. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies. How many of you know that that is one moment in your life where it will be proof whether you love God or not? When God has given you rest round about from all your enemies. Hallelujah. It is at such time God reminds people to not forget him because something happens to men when they enter rest. Rest usually comes with the temptation of complacency. Are we together? Battles remind you of your need for God and sometimes compels you to pursue after him. But the Bible says that David sat in his house after God had given him rest from all his enemies. Then verse 2. It says, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. Verse 3. And Nathan said unto the king, Go, it says, do all that is in your heart, for God is with you. Do all that is in your heart, for God is with you. If we go to First Chronicles chapter 22 from verse 5, First Chronicles 22 from verse 5. It gives us perspective. I'm trying to show you something about the house of God this morning. David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender, and the house that is to be builded for the Lord must be exceeding magnificial of fame and of glory throughout all countries. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. Reading to 11, verse 6. Then he called for Solomon his son and charged him to build an house for the Lord God of Israel. 
Uh -huh. It says, and David said to Solomon, my son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, thou hast shed blood abundantly and hast made great wars. Therefore, thou shalt not build an house unto my name because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. That was enough for the man to be angry. You didn't ask me, so it's not, if I refuse, it's not disobedience because I was not instructed. And he said, even though I have been prohibited on account of the blood that I had shed, I will still make preparation. In any case, let a house be built for the Lord. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, thou hast shed so much blood and all of that. Verse 9. Behold, a son shall be born unto thee. This is God speaking to him. Whom shall be a man of rest. And I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon. And I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. Two more verses. 10. He shall build a house for my name. And he shall be my son. And I will be his father. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Final verse. Now my son, the Lord be with thee. And prosper thou. And build the house of the Lord thy God. As he has said unto you. It is impossible to say you love the Lord. And yet not have that love expressed. As far as the house of God is concerned. Are we learning? This is very important. There are many believers who profess loving Jesus. We sing loving Jesus. We cry loving Jesus. But it is very clear that our love is found wanting when it has to do with the matters of the house of God. Psalm 92 and verse 13, profound scripture. It says, they that be planted in the house of God they that be planted i thought you would say they that are of god and yet the bible says when it has to do with the believers flourishing it says you must be planted in a particular location the bible calls it the house of god they that be planted in the house of god it immediately tells you that the house of god is a mysterious place i wrote a few things here that i want you to pay attention to number one that the house of God is beyond a building where congregants meet. Please listen carefully. The house of God is beyond a building where congregants meet. It is not the building that makes the place called the house of God. It is beyond the building where congregants meet. The house of God is beyond a venue for church or Christian programs. To the average believer, every time you talk about the house of God, they mean based on their understanding that venue where our church meets, that location where we converge, that is not the house of God. Are we together now? When this building was gutted by fire earlier this year, it was not the house of God that burned. No. Are we together? It was a physical building that was made of brick and mortar that burnt. The house of God cannot be burnt. The house of God cannot be destroyed. It's important that we give ourselves this reorientation that the house of God is beyond a building where congregants meet. The house of God is beyond a venue. Before arriving here, finally, I understand you sojourned at least two locations. Am I right on that? From the time this building was gutted by fire. And for every one of those meetings, you believed you were in the house of God. And you were right. What makes a place a house of God? If you find this secret, you can replicate that atmosphere anywhere. Because the house of God was not supposed to become... Um, a, a, a religious location that is just talk with the mind and there are many believers who do not know that their homes can become a house of God that their offices can become a house of God that their bodies in fact can become a house of God are we together 
So a lot of religiosity happens within church. And once people get out of church, in their minds, they are out of the house of God. According to scripture, there are five biblical requirements for any place to be called the house of God. And this is my charge to us this morning as we pray. There are five biblical requirements. If these requirements are not met in any building, in any location, it cannot be called the house of God. Number one, the house of God according to scripture must be a house of prayer for all nations. The house of God the first requirement for any structure, any gathering of a people to be called the house of God is that it must be non-negotiably so. It must be a house of prayer. Mark eleven fifteen to 17. Someone say a house of prayer. Please shout it. Say a house of prayer. So whether it is a location for a cell fellowship whether it is a place of gathering like this, whether it's the beautiful sites, the messy seat when built, whether it's your office, anywhere two or three are gathered, provided it is called a place of prayer, it qualifies to be called the house of God. Jesus came into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seat of them that sold doves, 16, and would not suffer allow that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Read verse 17 with me, please, if you can see. Ready? One to read. And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations a house of prayer? but ye have made it a den of so when you don't ask god and say come to your house you pray once you engage in prayer efficient consistent prayer it becomes the house of god god does not just dwell his house by invitation per se and say lord you just come it doesn't matter how i've made it your the efficiency and the consistency of your prayer is your invitation that lord this place is sacred sanctified dedicated unto you everybody say house of prayer if household of david as a church if the membership of this great assembly must be called the house of God, then there must be a people of prayer and this church must be a church, a place, a ground of prayer. Prayer consistently, prayer as a revelation. Not just a ritual to satisfy spirituality. The Bible says he spake a parable, Luke 18 and verse 1, to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Are we together? First Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Mark 11.24 What things soever ye desire. It says, When ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them. Prayer is very important. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. The Bible says, And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering. You must obtain grace to pray. Believers must pray. The house of God is only called the house of God when believers pray. It is my prayer sincerely from my heart that it is not only the pastors and the eldership of this church that become a people of prayer that the average believer in this place planted within this house will become a person of prayer by revelation prayer is not for men of god prayer is not just for those called into ministry 
prayer is for all men. You must obtain grace to pray. Are we together? An attack on your prayer life is a real attack on your spiritual life. In fact, it is an attack on your destiny. You want to know the power of prayer? Ask Daniel in Babylon that a parliament came together to enact a law against one man that prayer should not be offered for 30 days. I wonder what prayer does to the devil. I wonder what prayer does to your destiny that Satan is so intentional about attacking you. Peter, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But among the, all of the strategies that could be deployed over that situation, he says, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. He says, and when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. James 5 and verse 13, he says, is any man afflicted, let him pray. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you this morning. The grace to pray. The spirit of prayer and supplication. Let it rest upon someone. Let it rest upon a believer. Let it rest upon a receiver. In the name of Jesus Christ. The grace to pray until you mold yourself into a powerful believer. The grace to pray until you mold yourself from a fearful believer to a courageous believer from a weak believer to a powerful believer from a carnally minded believer to a spiritual believer so the house of god if it must remain so must become a house of prayer are you ready for the next key the second biblical requirement for any place to be called the house of god is that it must become it must be a place of revelation understanding and transformation write it so revelation understanding and transformation any convergence of believers that does not capture an opportunity for revelation understanding and transformation and that by the word cannot be called the house of god hallelujah The house of God is a place of understanding. I think it's Psalm 73 and verse 17 or so. It says, when I came into the sanctuary, then understood I. He was speaking contextually about the end of the wicked. But understanding can be found in the house of God. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I. Understanding happens in the house of God. Are we together? The place where the word of God is methodically taught line upon line precept upon precept here a little there a little i'm sure many of you have listened carefully to my contemplations as to how believers become matured believers will never become matured for as long as we cherry pick topics and just bring at random no there is a curriculum every doctor in college every engineer by the time you are given admission the university is not wondering what to teach you there is an exact body of knowledge that turns you to an architect turns you to a doctor are we together there is an exact body of knowledge that should turn any believer to become wholesome powerful transformed this is the assignment of the teaching priest he says, and I will give you pastors, shepherds, according to my heart, and they will feed you with knowledge, they will feed you with understanding. The house of God must become a house where knowledge, revelation, where understanding and transformation, transformation happens when you understand the word enough to engage it for your growth. The profit point of the word is your transformation. If you cannot be transformed by any word, it has not profited you. Did you hear that? Listen, your, the benefit of the word to the believer is not in your knowing it, it's not in your hearing it, it's not even in your rejoicing over it. Your ability to understand that word enough to engage it for your transformation. It is at the point you are transformed that the word profits you. Hallelujah. The house of God must be a place of revelation, 
understanding and transformation. Again, I pray for household of David from the depth of my heart. I pray particularly for all the teaching priests and they who serve God's grace in word and doctrine. Let the spirit of revelation rest upon you. That in the name of Jesus Christ, you will come into an accurate understanding of the ways of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is because of God's passion to bring the body of Christ to maturity and accuracy that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and teachers, pastors and evangelists and all of that. The Bible says, for the edifying, the perfecting of the saints. Are we together? For the work of the ministry. That we all together will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. Not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine or the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive. It is important that believers attain a state of maturity. You may have heard me say it many times that dominion is not an impartation. Dominion is the resultant effect of your thoroughly comprehending the ways of the kingdom. When it has to do with the knowledge of God, our knowledge is infinite. Our learning is infinite. Even in heaven, we'll keep learning God. Are we together? Nobody will ever exhaust the knowledge of God. But as far as the principles, the body of light, are located for the victory of the saints is concerned, it is finite. You can exhaust it. Hallelujah. Can I challenge you for one minute? Please look at me. What do you know about prayer? What do you know about victory? What do you know about Jesus? What do you know about Satan? What do you know about success? What do you know about failure? What do you know about delay? What do you know about speed? What do you know about triumph? What do you know about unity? What do you know about disunity? What do you know about longevity? What do you know about Satan? What do you know about the structure of darkness? What do you know about the angelic assistance for the saints? What do you know about leadership? What do you know about excellence? What do you know about the glory of God? What do you know about the wisdom of God? What do you know about the cosmos? The bedeviled antichrist system that you found yourself there. What do you know about being a sheep in the midst of wolves? What do you know about being as wise as a serpent and as gentle as a dove? These are the bodies of light that translate to the victory of the believer. If you do not know it, you will live a defeated life even though you are saved. It is this knowledge that gives credence to the eternal life you have received. Are we together? The Bible says an heir for as long as he's a child differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all. I'm praying for you this morning that God will plant in you a passion for methodical spiritual growth. Methodical spiritual growth. It is dangerous to know a little. You need high level spiritual illumination. Paul prayed that the eyes of our understanding be flooded with light flooded with light flooded with light acts chapter 20 and 32 and now brethren i commend you first to god then to the word of his grace which is able to build you up number one then to deliver to you in experience to deliver an inheritance many believers are ignorant Many believers know a little about this, a little about that. When we are faced with situations and circumstances, we begin to engage things at random. The blood of Jesus, Holy Ghost fire, touching and agreeing, seeds. We don't even know which key is responsible for which door. And somehow one will work. That's why we are not able to attain unto mastery. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned until he strives lawfully. to study yourself study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word is someone ready to pray in one minute ask the lord to help you to open up your understanding and plant within you a passion just take a minute oh how i love your law it is my meditation all day long I'm tired of being weak in the spirit 
tired of being ignorant. God has spoken great things concerning his Zion, but it takes knowledge. It takes knowledge. It takes knowledge. My people are destroyed and that for the lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. Listen to me. I pray for you sincerely from my heart that every word that comes upon this altar will be received with a heart that is full of faith and with a commitment to engage it. You believe that? Shout amen. amen. Do you know, let me tell you this. The most active period of Satan's attack is when the word is being taught. The most active period of Satan's attack is when the word is being taught. Satan is always interested in what God is saying because that is how he fashions his weapons against the believers. Satan also needs to hear what God is telling you because that is the only way he can launch an attack. Weapons are fashioned. They don't just come. It says no weapon fashioned. Are we together? The sower soweth the word. You see that? And Satan will always want to come and corrupt that seed by making it a bad soil or planting another seed. Satan for you. Every time the word of God is coming in church, that's when people sleep. That's when people begin to roam around. That's when people begin to browse and text and discuss other things and their word will come and they will not be sensitive to receive it. He says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but one thing Mary has chosen, to sit at the feet of the master. There is value in learning the ways of God. There is value in learning the ways of God. Is God speaking to us this morning? Very quickly, let's go to number three. What is the third requirement for any place to be called the house of God? Are you ready? It must be a place where men can access help and strength from God. This is powerful. If men cannot access help and cannot access strength there, it cannot be called the house of God. Psalm 20 and verse 1. I read this, but let this be a prophetic word for someone. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Ah, are there believers who came to church this morning? Let me try it again. The Lord, my God, hear thee in the day of trouble. He says, the name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Verse 2. Send thee help. From where? Hmm. There is help that can only be found in the sanctuary. Send thee help from a sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. Send thee help. Send thee help. You may have heard me say that the assignment of help is number one, to make things possible, then to make things easy. This is the assignment of help. Every time help comes to your life, it is number one to make things possible and then to make things easy. The house of God, ladies and gentlemen, is a place where men find help help that only God can give. He says, send the help from his sanctuary. Send the help from his sanctuary. Now you understand why they carried the man daily to the temple and kept him there. We cannot help you, but let's take you and drop you at the house of God. At least we know you are closest to receiving help. Send the help from his sanctuary. Let me tell you the truth. When you know there is help in the house of God, when you know men can find help, it will motivate you to draw many to the house of God. So every time you hear someone saying, my life is confused right now, I don't even know my marriage is breaking apart, immediately this orientation tells you it's not about adding membership to a church. It's that you really love God and you love those people. And you're saying, if I leave this family this way, 
they may not survive the end of the year come there is a place called the house of God he says send the help that as soon as that person steps in from the prayer through the worship you find out that everybody is jumping but only one person is crying they have found help help by the spirit send the help from his sanctuary the house of God must be and remain the place where men can find help and find strength from God are we learning let's go to number four the fourth requirement for any place to be called the house of God is that it must be a place where men experience the power and the glory of God the power and the glory of God the power and the glory of God Psalm 63 1 and 2 for a place any place including the household of David to be called the house of God it must be a place where men should can and will always experience the power and the glory of God oh God thou art my God it says early will I seek thee my soul tested for thee my flesh longed for thee in a dry and a thirsty land where no water is shout verse 2 together please ready one to go to see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary I want to see your power and glory the same way I saw it in the sanctuary that when I came to church I saw the sick healed when I came to church I saw the burden the oppressed delivered when I came to church I saw someone I know whose destiny has been shredded into pieces that he encountered the power of God he encountered the glory of God it is the reason why we must invest in prayer it is the reason why we must build capacity in the spirit so that we can be worthy hosts of his power the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 it says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and he says great grace was upon them all great grace was upon them all how many of them great grace was upon them all great grace was upon them all Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power help me he went about doing good healing all day that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him for God was with him they kept the 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 the, the man who was crippled at gate beautiful when peter and john saw him he said silver and gold i do not have but such as i have power should not be scarce within the house of god no something happens when there is no fuel in a filling station the vehicles leave there's no point they wait there are we together now the house of god must be a place where people experience his power not just a place where people are taught about his power teaching about the power of God is wonderful but the experience of God's power that people live with a spiritual souvenir they can go back home and they say where are you coming from they say of course the house of God where else will I have this kind of healing where else will I have this kind of deliverance? Do you believe what you are hearing this morning? Because everything I'm reading is going to become our prayer point for the household of David this morning. That God will grant access to the power of the Spirit like never before. Never before. You would hear that some lunatic just came in, meandered into the church and is outside. Couldn't even come in instinctively led by the spirit perhaps and just touch the wall of the church while a sermon is going my god and fire from the altar do you believe this you see let me tell you soul winning in gathering church growth was never supposed to be a burden there is a way 
God designed that men be drawn to God. The way is the way of power. Are we together? Believers do not get matured by power, but they are drawn to be believers by power. It is doctrine that matures believers, but it is power that attracts men to God. If you lack the power component in ministry, get ready for empty pews. It was noise abroad that Jesus was in town. They did not come to hear him. They came because they had serious cases. They had wasted all their money and here is a cheaper, nobler alternative to growth. Let me tell you sincerely, when you genuinely carry authentic spiritual power, power that is provable, power that you can demonstrate in the lives of people, there will be no limit to the exploits that you can make in the spirit. In fact, in my opinion, when you don't press for the power of the Holy Spirit, you don't truly really love God's people. One way to be a blessing is that you are empowered. You are really empowered. I thank God for the testimonies that you have recorded in this church, but I believe, and may it be a prophetic word for you, that it's a new season. New season. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 3, when Peter and John healed the man at Gates Beautiful, the Bible tells us that that testimony was so profound, it was so phenomenal. Did you know that the prayer they were supposed to have, they didn't even have it again. Everybody came and gathered around. It was too spectacular to be ignored. The Bible called it a notable miracle. A notable miracle. When 10 people in a family get jobs in one week, talk to me please. When 50 people in this church give birth to twins and triplets just like that. Most people do not know the value of a genuine miracle. Miracles have a compelling ability. They draw men. Do you know why? Because every man who comes to God comes first because he loves God. But people come because they have real needs. Did you hear what I said? That is the reason why once they perceive a church, a place, or a man of God, they perceive that you sustain an ability in the spirit to solve their problems, whether perceived or truly so, they will flock to you at least to give their lives a chance. I made a covenant with God that I will never, by the grace of God and by the mercies of God, be an empty preacher. Just teaching intelligently and at the end I say, beautiful, go home. No, sir. No. 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 That something must happen to your life and your destiny. You will turn back and not find your former self again. Because the power of God will so invade your life and invade your destiny. Could it be that I'm prophesying to somebody that in the name that is above all names, hence God brought you here this morning. And for there are many who are following online, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, everything that has pegged your life kept you down. Every area of your life, Shabaras Kabarato Siata, that is in need of the administration of God's power. May that power be made available for you now. Available over your finances available over your health available over your children in the name of Jesus I believe in the power of God I'm a student of his power I know what his power can do I know what the power of God can do I have seen it change lives I have seen it shift climates listen let me tell you this if you're a man of God here, let me charge you by the message of God. Among the many things to contend for is genuine, authentic, spiritual power. Again, genuine, authentic, spiritual power. People have real needs. Sicknesses are not a mirage. There are people who sit and they are laughing whereas they are dying. The doctors have told them you will not survive. It's as simple as that. Do you believe this? Yeah. I believe, Pastor Sam, that before Christ returns, and I've seen this many times in my vision, 
there will be a revival of the healing ministry again in a way I know that here and there we have seen it but it's still within the realm of argument there is a level of the manifestation of the power of God that is going to be imported to the body of Christ by the message of God that people will demonstrate that ability of the spirit in a way that has not been seen before I believe this with all my heart and perhaps someone came to church this morning and God brought you to remind you that that dream you saw five years ago about you stepping into that healing ministry is not a lie five years may have gone down the line but you are in the house of God where God reminds you of his promises and that your covenant with him to be a career a transmuter of his power to the nations that covenant is still valid Do you believe this? I believe the power of God. I truly believe that if I preach without the power of God, I'm wasting the time of God's people. Absolutely wasting their time. There is the spirit component to our speakings. What you are receiving is beyond enlightenment. No. What you are receiving is beyond knowledge, is beyond education. Beyond the frailty of the words you are hearing, there is a spirit transaction happening to you. It is that quickening that empowers you to become what is being taught, become what is being said, and the spirit entered into me. The spirit entered into me. The spirit entered into me. I feel stirred up in my spirit before we go to the last point to just speak. I believe that there's somebody in this place, truly, and I'm saying this by the Spirit, I believe that there is somebody in this place, it's time for you to get into this business of the anointing with the Holy Spirit. Listen, listen, listen. This business of power has been abused. It has been a reason for pride, unfortunately. But you see, there are still men and women that God is searching for. And God is saying, I want to trust Paraskia. I tell you, I just sense, just like a flow, the anointing of God's power. God is still searching for men. He's still searching for women. Man of God, rise up. This level is too low. You can't serve his purposes that way. No. It's time to quit the realm of arguments and explanations and step into a dimension of authentic spiritual power. That includes women. That includes men. That includes women. That includes men. Let me stretch my hands over someone. Let capacity, grace, I'm praying for you now. Capacity. Where is the man of God in need of power? Let grace rest upon you. Let grace rest upon you. Be strengthened within your inner man. Listen, don't be a weak Christian. You will not be a blessing that way. You need power with God. 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 Am I wasting your time? Power with God. Power with God. Power. It takes power to see. It takes power to hear. It takes power to discern. It takes power to stand. It takes power to remain. It takes power to defend the name of the Lord. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Submit themselves. Submit themselves. Submit themselves. Submit themselves. Situations and circumstances will not bow just because you are tired of them. They will bow at the instance of power. You cannot build a church just by sentiments and intelligent discussions. It takes the power of the Holy Ghost. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. And it says the Holy Ghost shall overshadow you. The power of the highest.
power of the highest. Pray in the spirit for one minute before we go to the fifth point. Pray. Generate power from within your spirit man. It's time to be a man of power. Time to be a woman of power. Shalika Sabah Shalakapa Kratakabakata Barakato Sobrande Rakata Brakata Belaka Barako Sadas Household of David pray pray Shalisa Embrataka Barakas Kota Bratsa Balataka Rakata Brantos Koto Bakata Balakato Just do what I'm asking you to do. Something is happening to your spirit, man. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up exalted I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorify bring the Lord strengthen in your inner man just take a moment to pray this is why you came this morning you are not wasting your time weak ministry dies a weak destiny dies strengthen within your inner man hallelujah in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus power is the force that makes things happen power is the force that makes things happen when there is no power there is no movement there is no motion there is no progress there is no advancement there is no increment power is the force responsible for anything that moves in the spirit and in your destiny 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 I'm seeing a number nine 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 there is an anointing that is coming on nine people this is what I'm seeing. We just spoke about power. In the name of Jesus, I pray. It is grace that comes for various reasons and for various purposes. But I stretch my hands right now. Let that grace rest upon you. Let that grace rest upon you. Let that grace rest upon you. Rest upon Deborah. Rest upon Esther, rest upon Gideon, rest upon Elijah. Listen, please listen to me. I don't know if I taught it here in this church, but I remember telling you that every name you see in the Bible is not just the name of an individual. That the names you see in the Bible are spiritual pathways that produce a certain kind of believer. So when you say Abraham, 
Abraham is not just the name of a man. Abraham is the name given to a spiritual pathway that if followed will produce a certain kind of man. That woman wearing a red hair tie, I'm seeing fire rest on her. Help her please. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Spirit of wisdom, rest on me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Let your power for signs and wonders rest on me, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Holy Ghost power, rest on me. One of the ways you know that God is the one training you is that you must find a parallel to your training in Scripture. It doesn't matter what you are becoming. You must find an expression to your training. So when you begin your walk with the Spirit, eventually you will see Esther forming. Eventually you will see Elijah forming. Eventually you will see Peter forming. If you cannot find your parallel in Scripture, it is not the Spirit of God training you. Because his patterns are consistent. I'm showing you the benefit of coming to the house of God. That in experiencing the power of God is to the end that you be formed. That you can see the mold you are assuming in the spirit. So you know that I just, be, I began as a prayer warrior. Just with a passion for prayer. But as you sojourn and as you dwell in the house of God. You will begin to find your expression in scripture. I'm looking like Anna the prophetess. I'm looking like Elijah. I am looking like Daniel. What is this combination of prayer and leadership? What is this combination of prayer and governmental authority? Why am I a man of prayer and yet I have an unusual access to systems and structures? That is Daniel forming. You will always find your formation in scripture. Let me give you the last one so we'll pray. Let me give you the last one so we pray. Be seated for a minute, please. The house of God must be a house of prayer for all nations, must be a place of revelation, understanding, and transformation, must be a place where men access help and strength from God, must be a place where men experience the power and the glory of God. The final requirement according to scripture for any place and any gathering of God's people to be called the house of God is that it must be a place where men can experience the love of Jesus in a practical way. The love of Jesus in a practical way. James 1 27 the love of Jesus in a practical way. James chapter 1 please and verse 27. James 1 27. Here's what it says. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. And to keep himself unspotted from the world. This dimension of God's love and kindness must be captured in any gathering of God's people for that place to be called the house of God. In Acts chapter 4 from verse 34, I believe, there is an apostolic model that is given to us. Please give us Acts chapter 4, 35, 34 and 35. Yes, thank you. It says, neither was there any among them that lacked. Please look up. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prizes of the things that were sold. Verse 35, and laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution. This is really the point. 
Now we don't have to do it the way they did it those days to go and sell your land and houses. The idea is that distribution was made unto every man according as he had the need. Now, the church is not supposed to solve everybody's financial problem. It's not supposed to endorse carelessness. But there must be a dimension of God's love and mercy. This is a house of mercy. And it's impossible to capture the word mercy without the word give. Are we together? A merciful person must be a giver. The Bible tells us that mercy is a seed. If you show mercy, you will receive mercy. I know, with all due respect, great assemblies who do well, preach well, but when it has to do with the ministry of mercy. And I think sometimes we men and women of God, we make these mistakes we become very thoughtless over the needs of the people and our focus is just to build church and I'm saying this because I'm speaking to the body of Christ it matters that we pastor God's people with the heart the Bible says and David shepherded them with the integrity of his heart and with the skillfulness of his hands when it has to do with your heart you must have a heart that is thoughtful Hallelujah. I have learned in leadership that people do not care how much you know until they know how much you care. Learn from Jesus. Jesus is done preaching in a very powerful crusade. Great miracles. And he looked upon the people and he was moved with compassion. And he said, you know what? Let these people sit down. They will have to eat before they go. They said, Jesus, don't get us into trouble here. There are about 5,000 men aside, women and children where are we going to get the supplies? And he insisted until the people were fed. Doesn't mean direct feeding. The idea is that there must be a component in church that ministers to the needs of people. You see, faith is gradual. Faith is a process. Are we together? God works miracles. He gives speed, but he's not a magician. It is line upon line, precept upon precept. I pray to God many years ago and it's still my prayer up until today that God will grant me compassion that I don't just want to be a powerful man of God I also want to be a compassionate man of God that lion and lamb must be captured in your life if you are a lamb alone they will kill you if you are a lion alone you will kill every lamb you need to be both lion and lamb a lion that is a lamb will not kill a lamb even though it's a lion because he knows what it means to be a lamb. A lamb that is also a lion will respect the strength of the lion and not take the lion for granted. Knowing that it has capacity to kill it. You need to be both lion and lamb. When you are lamb alone, you become a victim eternally. When you are a lion alone, you will victimize people without knowing. That lion and lamb dimension is important. Are we together now? Yes. So I don't want to be the man of God walking miracles, doing great things and then I have a most active and faithful member having to trek home and not even knowing how he gets home. Doesn't matter whether his family dies, doesn't matter whether his family eats, no, it matters. Did you hear what I said? It matters. I'm praying that God will raise people from within this church aside from the compassionate assignment of the church that God will raise people who will reflect the benevolence of the kingdom people who are raised are we together have you heard about a woman in the Bible called Dorcas did you ever read about Dorcas expressions of love in terms of welfare and hospitality is a major component is a major factor that makes a place to be called church compassion expressed in love and care and giving i have trained my people that no matter how large the ministry is at least at a workforce level nobody should be sick and down and depressed without me not knowing within 48 hours it doesn't matter where that is the power of systems and structures 
people don't care what you know I repeat to you again until they know that you care hallelujah and I thank God for a very visionary church like this and I hope that this becomes a model for many people care about the people who serve are we together now yes I remember one time a dear son in the gospel they were returning pastor from a, a crusade and these guys just surrounded them and kidnapped like six people and I was doing something when I was called and they said this is what has happened and you know he was so broken and he said they had kidnapped my people I said my God from where again from a crusade coming and you know they, you know how these people behave like mad people they just give all kinds of ungodly amounts bring this before this time otherwise and they will do it truly because their hearts have been seared they, are, they don't have a conscience and I sat down I thought to myself I said but these faithful people they risk their lives to go and stand by this man of God and they preach the gospel saved souls on their way going it was not a making of theirs the Bible says withhold not good from him that it is due when it is within your power and don't delay someone can die and I thought about it it was it was a very huge amount and we tried to you know make calls see what we could do but at the end of it I said no there are mothers there with children there are people there I should not waste the destiny of a family when it is within your power I said whatever it is within our power glory be to God the long and short is that they were able to come out of that place and to me of course you will feel the pain of such an amount leaving you but the consolation is it validates the fact that truly you have demonstrated to people that it is profitable to be planted in the house of God there are people today who only got admission because they came to church there are people who got jobs because they came to church listen we need to rewrite that narrative that makes church look like a nuisance to society a nuisance to civilization are we together now the church is not all about collecting money from people unfortunately wrong narratives that are sold around the church is a place of tremendous blessing tremendous blessing tremendous blessing tremendous blessing sometimes humility too must be guided because it is it is unguided humility that does not let the world see how much the church is doing you know in a bit to want to really cover a lot of things the only thing sadly that they see is when the offerings are being collected but they do not see the lives that are being changed so it's good to be humble but where the world must know what the church is doing we must let it know let's let's make it known and without any sense of prejudice hallelujah are we learning the house of God the household of David if this place must be and remain the house of God these are the things that must happen that you must be a people of prayer you must be a people of word help must be found in all its ramifications you must be exposed to the power of the Holy Spirit and finally that the love of Jesus must be distributed not just from pastor to the people but among yourselves imagine that you are done with service even though I know that society unfortunately has become a very harsh place even to provide help you can provide help and pay for it but then it's better to take the risk loving Jesus anyway that after service you can see someone and say can I give you a lift somewhere and the person says wow I came to household of David and for that person it's not about the lift it's about the thoughtfulness a reflection of the pastor's ideology which is a reflection of God's thinking and that person will go and bring 10 more people like the woman at the well remember said come see a man every time people see good things they don't keep quiet let me tell you they will always invite someone even if it's their loved one the benevolence of the saints is important it translates to growth and increase when people experience love in addition to power and word they will be glad to call everyone to say you know what I found a home not just a place to visit I found a home so our little children back home once service is done 
I usually, before I attend to anybody, as many of them, they line up, they hug me and give me letters before I start counseling. Even if I'm not going to counsel that day, I must spend time with the children. So once we're about sharing the grace, you see, all, that's their own koinonia service. Of course, they pray, do their thing, but once the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, they are happy and nobody would dare stop them. No, they are more important to me than anybody. It doesn't matter whether it's the president of any nation because adults, their future has been known, but the children... <laughs> hallelujah and let me tell you before we pray what i began to observe because of course the children come from various families with various um you know levels of exposure initially when i started this some of the children you could see that they didn't believe they belonged but they noticed that the same generous hug the same everything the ones who can speak english or the cannot well dressed or otherwise and it began to change they started making friends among themselves they were happy they noticed others were writing me letter they will write everything wrong english draw love I, I will receive it just you bring it for me and i found out the other people started writing it too it started building the confidence of the ones who felt they were outcasts and they would now join the queue and sometimes i will insist that the welfare should get a package for them and i will be the one to hand it myself Sometimes you see all of them coming, say, okay, I should bring my ears. They just wrote, uh, come on entrance. I say, you mean it? Did you pass? <laughs> you see, many of you would have been better if that's how you were raised. <laughs> look, at, look at the recovery you are having to go through right now as an adult. For some of you, the first person who said, I love you, was the most dangerous person who came to your life. <laughs> My time is exhausted. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest. Hallelujah. I have about nine more minutes. Let me split that time to two. We're going to spend the first four minutes praying for household of David. Do you love this church? Do you love your pastor? You want to see God? In fact, is it all right if we take, let me split it into three. I've changed my mind. One minute for quality thanksgiving. Not singing. Praying the thanksgiving. Many of you like singing and it's good, but you are going to pray. You turn the thanksgiving to prayer. Are we together in the next one minute i don't whether you want to go on your knees you're going to say father thank you this is the lord's doing this is the lord's doing this is the lord's doing father we honor you thank you you are the builder of the church the restorer thank you for what you have done for household of david it is of the lord's mercy that your work in this house has not been consumed it is because your compassions they fail not thank you for pastor shola thank you for his dear wife pastor abigail thank you for the leadership thank you for their loyalty thank you because in spite of the shifts in venue the commitment and the love of your people remained intact someone thank him thank him give him quality thanks for his faithfulness lay it to hearts to say thank you 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 hallelujah hallelujah now i want us to pray for household of david now and even in the future whether you are standing or kneeling it doesn't really matter 
you are going to pray and say, Father, let the word of God never fall. Let there never be a time on this pulpit where it will just be carnality that will be marketed. Let the fire on this altar remain. Let the power of prayer remain. Let the soundness of doctrine remain. Someone who loves household of David, pray. Someone who loves God's servant, pray. Someone who loves the leadership, pray. Lord, raise quality men as sons and daughters within this house. Raise teaching priests. Raise apostles. Raise prophets. Raise evangelists. Add daily, O oh God, as many who should be saved. Bring daily, O oh God, as many as should be transformed, as should be healed, as should be delivered. Bring the young, bring the old, and turn them into objects of praise, signs and wonders. Give this church the gift of faithful men loyal people sons and daughters let doctrine not be scarce let your word not be scarce let your power not be scarce let character not be scarce let integrity not be scarce let godliness not be scarce In Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray now I'm going to give you the next few minutes I'd like you to cry if it is true that your body is a temple of the Lord Jesus Christ anything that does not look like God I'm releasing my faith with you go ahead and pray before I speak over your life if it's sickness it must leave me now if it's shame and reproach it must leave me now in the name of Jesus when Jesus entered the temple, listen, 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 listen. When Jesus entered the temple, the first set of people he drove were thieves. That means when God comes into a life, he's looking for anything that steals to drive it out. The same way he drove the money changers, the ones merchandising God's temple satan is merchandising people's bodies merchandising their destinies i'd like you to open your mouth in the next one minute please cry as i release my faith to speak over you that situation has to change please pray don't keep quiet what you tolerate will never change you came here this morning crying for mercy Pray over your health. Pray over your family. Pray over the work God has given you. Pray over your job or your need for one. Pray over your home or your need for one. Pray over your children or your need for one. Pray over your finances. Pray over increase. That God will multiply you. You will not be small. He will not be few. He will glorify you. You will not be small. Someone is praying. God answers prayers. Take the next one minute to cry. It says be anxious for nothing. But in everything. By prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Lord I have cried. Wipe my tears by your mercy. My children have cried. Send help from your sanctuary send me financial help by wisdom send me the gift of man turn my mourning to dancing my sorrow to joy give me a testimony let there be a consolation to my loving you a consolation to my serving you a consolation to my living for you go ahead and pray Everyone that asketh receive it. Everyone that asketh receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you believe in the power of prophecy? I have watched my life and I have watched the life of many people change because of the creative power of the prophetic word. That when God's word comes genuinely from him, it is able to shift the climate over a man's life and bring that man into a dimension of grace that perhaps he was not even prepared for. I want to stand in faith with the man of God and every man of God in this place to speak over our lives and I want you to receive it. Believe it that at the back of these frail speakings there is a grace that empowers that word and insists that it does not fall. Hallelujah. As I sat back there and watched the video of your new site given to you by God, my excitement was not just for the site alone, but my prayer was that that kind of result of establishment that it will be reproduced in everybody's life. Are we together? That the same way the church, by the power of God, you know, by God's grace, like Pastor said, um, I think I've been on this journey with this church for about eight years. So I've had the honor of seeing the transitions right from your former place to where you are now and look where God is taking you to, you see. It's impossible, listen, it's impossible to be part of what is working and then your life too now pegs. I pray for you, whatever has stagnated you, not allowing you to move, not allowing you to experience testimonies, I come in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Here's my prophetic word for you. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Advance. Make progress. I place grace upon your life. Go forward. I say it again. Go forward. Go forward. In every area of your life, let the chains break. Let the limitations break. Go forward. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. God is a God of portions. Do you know what that means? The Bible says the increase of the earth is for all. That even the king is fed by that which the field delivers. That means for everyone there is a space. Physical land space but also space where your relevance should not be fought. The Bible says, watch this now, that the nation of Israel, you see, that they found a place, they dug a well, the Philistines came and covered it. Remember the story? They dug it again and these people will not allow them. They still came and harassed them. Once you are not in your place, you will be a victim. But the Bible says they dug the third one and they were left alone they called it Rehoboth they said God has given us our own space I don't know whose space you are still contending with but may my God take you to your own space your own financial space ministerial space marital space I say it again financial space territorial space Where your land is in Lagos, we dispossess any giant. And we decree and declare, may my God establish you there. In the name of Jesus. You see, my time is up. But I want you to take this, particularly for the men. There is a dimension of faith that is expressed in land. Land has always been a token that validates the presence of faith and covenant with God every time 
a man walks with God in a certain way and God begins to swear a blessing upon you there is a token that is represented do you know why because the earth you see is beyond the space of occupation is a witness is one of the three witnesses upon the earth hallelujah it's important for you to know that the earth is a universal point of contact the earth is a universal point of contact and when i say earth i don't just mean land the earth and all its elements together that means it is in god's mind that eventually you find a space this was what laban refused to allow jacob have he kept tipping Jacob and Jacob said, no, I was trained by my father that God is a God of portions. I've gotten to a point where I need to establish my own family and have my own covenant with God. And Laban said, no, if this man leaves, he consulted by divination and found out that the reason why he prospered was because the man was there. Whatever has tied you down that is stopping you from going forward. Your life is not at the frequency of maximum utility simply because there are Labans. Labans may not mean men. Labans can mean systems. I prophesy unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, be released now. Be released to find your space. Be released to find your place. I say it again. Be released to find your space. Be released to find your place. And for every worker, I'm praying for everybody, but please allow me pray for the workers. Every worker, faithful laborer, genuine son and daughter connected to this grace. In all your expressions, not just within Nigeria here, the UK as we saw, and every other expression. Everyone who has labored in prayer, in giving, in word and doctrine, particularly when this church was you know the building was gutted by fire i was so touched in my heart as we spoke with pastor shola and he told me the faithfulness of the workers and the membership in all the transitions when covid happened there are people who just because the church was locked for three months the pastors almost plunged to depression because when the church was opened there were no members again the people said, this has, has always been an opportunity for us to run away. Now that COVID has come, after three months, we're gone. It takes grace to retain hope. The Bible says strong men retain wealth. Retainership is a product of strength, not just wisdom. It takes wisdom to gather, but it takes strength. Strength only as by God. Let me speak a blessing upon you. For every faithful worker, tirelessly walking serving god and serving this grace convenient or otherwise for every faithful member loving jesus adhering being loyal to the faith submitting to the apostles doctrine i pray for you may my god turn you into a sign and a wonder may my god turn you into a sign and a wonder may my god turn you into a sign and a wonder may my god turn you to a sign and a wonder in the name of jesus christ you will never lack help in your life receive it as a prophetic word you will never lack help in your life men will arise to help you arise to defend you arise to protect you arise to support you arise to give to you Arise to partner with your vision. Arise to wipe your tears. Arise to carry you in the name of Jesus. For this that you have done, let a memorial be built for you in the spirit that your children and your children's children will benefit from. In Jesus' name we pray.